So let's now uh, have a look at the last two uh, problems on uh, assignment number three. And uh, first, uh, now, uh, while well, we have seen two problems on uh, the topic of deterministic or fixed rate demand, but now we should also look at a problem here where you have uncertain or so-called stochastic demand. And we have three sub-problems in, uh, in this problem. First, this is uh, a typical uh, newsboy or news vendor problem where you have a one, uh, one period and you need to decide uh, the order size, uh, size per period because it's not possible to store the product. Uh, and B, it is a theoretical question, and in C, it is a uh, problem where you actually should uh, adjust the uh, or use the, the EOQ or EOQ-like formulas and find uh, a combination of reorder point and uh, uh, order size, which will give us the best uh, possible ordering policy. So let's first have a look at problem A. Uh, as mentioned, this is a news boy, news vendor problem. It is uh, uh, here a book and paper store distribute a monthly magazine, which means that you have a defined sales period for of one month, and uh, probably a magazine will not sell much the next month, so it will be a new issue, and then uh, they will at least lose uh, some some value according to uh, to the the most current issue of the magazine. Uh, looking at the sales, they have concluded that the demand for each issue will be normal distributed with an expected sale of 250 and a standard deviation of 100. So here, the purchase price is 20, sales price 50, and they have an agreement with a second-hand store that will buy some unsold magazines for 5 kroner each. So even if you are not able to sell all the magazines, you are buying, you can get rid of them and get something back, but of course you get only 5 kroner back and you have to pay 20. So you, you will lose money on the unsold magazines. Uh, looking at the solution here. First, of course, as usual, read through the text very thoroughly. Make sure that you understand, that you find out the information given and what information, uh, what are the values for the different parameters. In this case, you have a standard deviation, the sigma of 100. You have the mu value, which is the expected demand of 250. And we have the overage cost, cost of overestimating the market. It means that you have overestimated, you have bought too many. And then you will lose 15 kroner for each magazine you have left when a new issue is, uh, uh, is published. You buy for 20 and you have to sell them for 5. Uh, but we can also define the underage cost as the loss of profit of not being able to sell a magazine which is uh, uh, asked for. Then you will lose the profit, of, but, uh, which is the difference of the sales price and the purchase price. So you will lose 30 kroner for every magazine you are not able to sell, and you will lose 15 kroner for every magazine which is unsold. We will find the critical ratio as the, uh, which is defined as the underage cost of 30 divided by the sum of the underage and the overage cost, which will in this case give us a value of 0.67. And now, to be able to uh, determine the optimal order size, we should use this critical ratio, and we know we have a normal distribution. So, by looking up in the normal distribution table, table A1 in the textbook, and we remember that 50% of the area is lower than the mean. So, let's look up table number A1. shown here, and since 50% is at the left side of the mean here, we are now looking for 0 0.67 minus 0 0.5, which is 0 0.17, which is here. Find this value in the table and read the K value or the C value here, 0 0.40 
4. So the hundreds are given in the columns and the tenths are given in the rows. 0 0.44 is now the Z value which is to be used in the normal distribution to find the best uh, option of the, the order size. Uh, so we know that the Z value is 0 0.44 and we use this formula. The mu is of course the expected demand and since the uh, the underage cost, the cost of underestimating the market is higher than the overage cost. We should buy more than the expected uh, uh, demand, of course. Uh, and then the critical ratio uh, wa was found at the C value of 0 0.44. The standard deviation is 100, which means that we should have a safety stock of 44 when we expect to sell 250. This means a total of 294 will give us the best possible profit here. So this is the solution for this newsboy problem. Buy 294 magazines every month and in a well, common month with the, exactly the expected demand and you have 44 magazines left. But then of course in some months you will have a higher demand, in some others you will have a lower demand, but this number will give us the best possible profit. So question B, in some situations, this is a theoretical question and with all theoretical questions it's very important to read through it and answer what you are actually asked for. Make sure that you answer the questions given here, it doesn't matter or of course if you can show that you have some more knowledge it's, uh, uh, it is good but you need to make sure that you are answering the questions which is asked for. Here explain shortly which situation these models should be used instead of Newsboy. Try to answer this in the first section here, of course. The main problem here, uh, the main difference is that uh, in the QR models you can store to later periods, which is not possible for where you have the Newsboy model. Uh, in the Newsboy model you have to, uh, the product will have no value or actually, well at least a, a smaller value in a later period. Uh, and you have to discard or get rid of the stock at the end of the period. But with QR models, you are able to store. And here, how to calculate lot size and reorder point within these models. You should also try to explain that, even if you are asked to do it in detail in question C. Here, you have the probability distribution in the lead time to compute the optimal lot size Q, or the, or, uh, the order size, and the reorder point R. And both are independent, independent decision variables. So unlike in the deterministic problem, uh, you cannot uh, decide or, or calculate exactly the value of R by looking at the demand rate. So uh, the objective will be to choose Q and R to minimize the total cost. And you have equations for finding Q with respect to R and equation of finding R with respect to Q. So start computations, uh, usually by using the EOQ uh, formula, is a very good approximation. And then solve the two, uh, the, the two uh, formulas uh, every other time until they co will converge to uh, the same value two times in a row. And then you conclude that this combination is the best combination of the order size Q and the reorder point R. So in problem C, you should solve one problem with a QR model. Here, also a lot of different information given, the purchase cost, interest rate, cost of four of a lost sale, which is the P, the penalty value. Uh, you are given the interest rate, you can easily calculate the holding cost for storing one unit in one full year. And you're also given 10, somewhere here, that's the K, the, place, uh, the expense of placing an order. You have given that the expected demand in the lead time is 125. The lead time is a three month period. And if you have a demand of 125 for three months, the annual demand is easily calculated to be 500. Standard deviation in the lead time, 
15. And as mentioned, start by finding the EOQ value, which in this case is 91. Use the EOQ value in this formula to calculate the cumulative or 1 minus the cumulative value for a given reorder point. This formula will give you a total of 0 0.0546. Now look up in the normal distribution table. In this case we can use table A4. Both A1 and A4 are the normal distribution but they, are, they have a different uh, uh, different design and uh, are easily, uh, this A4 is much easier to use when you're talking about uh, uh, this uh, QR models. So here we can look up 1 minus FOC, the number we are looking for, and read the corresponding C value. And we remember we calculated this number to be 0 0.0546. Look up this value, 0 0.0546. Well, it should be this number, 0 0.054 at least. This is the closest one, corresponds to 1.6 at c-value of 1.6. And then we also know that to find the expected number of stockouts, we need this L of c function, also called the standardized loss function. And this can be found in the same table as shown here, because we have these partial expectations. So, for a c-value of 1.6, which is found by looking up this number corresponding to 1 minus the cumulative value of, uh, of a given c-value, we can also find a partial expectation here, the L function, the value 0 0.0232. This one can be used here to find the expected number of stockouts multiply by the standard deviation of 15. Uh, we can also, when we know the c-value, like we did with the newsboy problem, easily calculate the, well in this case the reorder point, as the mu, the expected demand in the lead time, plus the standard deviation multiplied by c. In this case, this corresponds to 149. Reorder point of 149. So the policy so far, order 91 new items when you have 149 left on stock. But this is not the optimal policy, so we should uh, continue. Expected num number of stock costs, as mentioned, use this function. And then we can use this expression or this value here in the formula for updating the Q. So now using this formula, we will get a new Q value as 97. And then we have these two formulas, one formula for calculating Q and another for one for 1 minus the cumulative value with a given reorder point. And these should now be solved iteratively until they conclude or uh, will stabilize at one given value for one of the uh, parameters because then you know continuing will also give you the same value on the other parameters. Uh, and again, using a Q-value of 97 will give us a new value here, which is to be looked up in the normal distribution table. And we can see that the C-value will be updated. You will get another well, reorder point, 148.55. Uh, can update again, find a new Q-value. Well now it's closest to 98 and at some point where we are satisfied with the accuracy, usually if we have the, the correct or the, the same integral number, it is usually time to, to stop. And then in this case we can conclude that the order size Q should be 98 and the reorder point should be 149. Order 98 items when you have 149 left on stock. 
<coughs> and then the last question is about lot sizing. And uh, as usual, read through the text here. We have the demand for 10 weeks, different demand for all the 10 weeks. Uh, and we should know uh, also we have a setup cost of 132 and storage cost of 0 0.6 per unit per week. Uh, use the three heuristics here first, silver meal, least unit cost and part period balancing. Try to solve this problem with the heuristics and then uh, also compare the results in problem E. In problem D, formulate this problem in Lingo as an LP, linear programming problem and find the optimal lot size schedule for the producer. So a lingo formulation or an LP formulation will always give you the optimal, uh, optimal solution when, of course, then you, uh, you should know that uh, the LP uh, formulation is only optimal when the, uh, the parameter values and the, the demand and everything is exactly correct. Otherwise, any of the heuristics can be uh, equally good in, in practice because if there are uncertainty on, on the parameter values. So on problem E, compare the results from the different techniques and comment the solutions. And here, important, comment the solutions. Many of you have tried to explain the, uh, the heuristics, which, uh, well, well, it's of course good to see that you can know how they, they work, but the what is asked for here is comment the solution. What is the structural difference on the solution? This is what I was looking for. And at last, assume that the production cap capacity is limited to 100. What changes will this do information do on the optimal solution? And also ask what happens if the maximal production is less than 44. This is important. It should be less than 44, not less than or equal. OK, first, silver meal. Solved like this, and we hopefully remember the silver meal will try to find the average cost per period, and it, it will always be uh, well what we call myopic. It will always look one period at a time ahead. So we start by producing only for one period. Then you will have only the ordering cost, 132, uh, or production cost. And you will not have any storage because you produce only what you need in the first period. Okay, first option only produce 12 items in period number one. Then the average cost per period is 132. Next option is to produce for the two first period, and we remember first period 12, second period 14, which means that you have to store. 14 items in one period to a cost of 0 0.6. Find the average by dividing by 2, and you will get a lower cost. So we should now continue. Next option is to produce for three periods. We produce 12 to be used in the first period. We produce 14 to be used in the second period, and 26 to be used in the third period. We have to store 14 in one period and 26 in two periods to a cost of 0 0.6 to find the average divided by 3. And the cost here is even smaller than the previous one, so we should now continue. And do the same for period number 4, producing for four periods. Setup cost will always be, uh, always be uh, present. Uh, 14 stored in one uh, period, 26 in two, and 32 items to be stored in three periods. Cost is still 0 0.6, average is divided by four. This number is slightly higher than this number, which means silver mill method concludes that we should only produce for three periods when we start in period number one. So then the conclusion here, would be produce 12 plus 14 plus 26, 52, in period number one, and then start a new production in period number four.
And then this is shown in stage two, because starting now, pro uh, period number four will correspond to the first period. You will have only the set of cost if you are only producing for that period. If you are producing for period number four and five, you have to store 38 in one period. And if you are producing for period four, five, and six, you have in addition to store 42 in two periods. Get the average, and in this case, the conclusion will be the same. Produce for three periods, and then start a new production batch in number four. <coughs> uh, and we can continue. Stage three will now start on period number seven, because we have three periods here, three periods here. And in this case, we can see that producing for three periods will be more expensive on average than producing for two periods. So in period seven, only for period seven and eight, and in period nine, we should also produce for period number 10. The total cost with this strategy is production one, two, three, and four, four times the setup cost of 132, and you have to add the size of the stock at each period, and multiply it by 0 0.6, and the total cost here will be 735. So, next question is to use the least unit cost technique. And the principle is the same, but here, instead of finding the average per period, we should find the average per unit. So here we have to divide by the number of units. But the principle is the same, continue until the average cost per unit starts to increase. And here the conclusion will be different, but because here we should produce for a total of five periods. This will give us the smallest average value. And after five periods, start all over again. Step number two means that now we should produce for three periods, as we can see here, with the lowest average per unit. And step number three, produce for the two last periods. So now the cost of this strategy is set of costs only three times, 132 multiplied by three, and then you will have holding cost for the sum of this line here about inventory, and multiply the sum by 0 0.6, but this will be a better strategy, 730.8, so this is actually better than the silver mill solution. If we now continue to the third heuristic, the part period balancing, uh, now, instead of finding averages per period or unit, we should rather compare the holding cost for the different options with the uh, setup cost or the production cost. And we remember that the setup cost was 132. So now, from period number one, we should look what happens if we are producing for one period then the holding cost is zero. If you are producing for two periods, the holding cost will be 14 items stored in one period to a cost of 0 0.6. And the next option, producing for three periods, means that still we have 14 in one period at a cost of 0 0.6, but in addition we have 26 from period one to three, which is two periods, and uh, so, uh, which is two, two periods from period one to three, and to a cost of 0 0.6 per unit per period or per week. So by looking at the holding cost this way, we can calculate the holding cost shown here, and we should choose where the number of the order horizon, or the number of periods, where the holding cost is closest to the ordering cost or the setup cost. And here, well, 132, we have to compare this one, the lower value, to this one. 
And this is the holding cost with four periods. This one is uh, approximately 35, and this one is 56 away. So we choose the closest one, which is four periods. And then we start all over again from period number five, comparing one, two, three, and four. Here, the lower value is 75. The higher value is 156.6. And this number is closer to 132 than this number. So in this case, we should choose the highest value. This means that we have to compare uh, the lower and the upper uh, value when looking at the uh, order horizon and choose which is closest to the setup cost. And then from period number nine again, we find out that we should uh, store or produce for the two last periods. And the total cost in this case would still be, we have setup cost in period one, five and nine. We have inventory as shown here, and this will give us a total of 717, which is the best strategy so far when comparing the three different uh, uh, the, the three different uh, solutions or, or uh, heuristics. Okay, next problem, formulate the problem in lingo and find an optimal lot size. And we have seen there are several ways to formulate a problem in lingo. This code is similar to the, well, the, the programming code, which we have also seen one example. And uh, as I have mentioned a few times, it's important that you can rec recognize such a problem like this with this type of, uh, uh, of lingo code. Uh, so here you should be able to recognize that this is a lot sizing problem with a demand as shown here. And we can also see here that the K values, the setup costs are 132, and this is the same for all 10 periods. And the holding cost is 0 0.6 for all the periods. And we don't have this, uh, see the production cost is not included in our problem. But this problem is now described here in code and it corresponds to a lot sizing problem looking like this. Which is the same problem. Here we are given the cost of 132 multiplied by the deltas, and the deltas in this case describes the periods, well the deltas are binary variables as defined here, and when the binary variables are one, you have production in a period, and if the, uh, the binary variable uh, is zero, then you don't have production. So here you describe that you should minimize the function of 132 multiplied by the number of periods to produce, plus 0 0.6 multiplied by the inventory level in each period. And here you have the balancing constraints for production. Production should meet the demand, and the right-hand side here is the same as we saw in the table, the demand for the different periods. And what is in excess, or the difference between the production and the demand, will lead to difference in the inventory level. So here we have balancing constraints for production and inventory uh, compared to the demand. Here we state that the productions should be smaller than or equal to. This number is found as the sum of all the demand, which is a maximum. You should never produce more than this number. And the deltas are one, so uh, are zero or one. So if you have a period with a corresponding delta value of zero, the production should be smaller than or equal to zero. Of course, it will be zero. Otherwise, it can be anywhere between zero and 439. Solving this problem shows that you get the value of 717, and you can actually recognize the solution we found by the part period balancing technique. So in this case, the part period balancing technique also gave us the optimal solution. Production in period number one, five and nine. Inventory level is shown here. And production level 
is shown here. Produce 84 in period 1, 167 in period 5, and 188 in period number 9. But we have also, uh, as we saw in the, in the solution file, we have um, another way to formulate the same problem this way. And you have, you have seen an example here, what is actually uh, done, uh, which is the difference in the example, is to exchange the uh, demand, which is the demand from the table here. The setup cost is defined here, and the hauling cost is defined here. And by using this code, we are defining exactly the same problem as we did uh, in, the, in the previous file. And we will get the result of 760, 717. Looking at the x values, we find the same values of production. Looking at the delta values, we find the same periods where we should produce, so that this solution is exactly the same. And now, looking at the, uh, here, uh, looking at problem E, compare the results and comment the solution here. We know that Lingo will give the optimal solution with setup in periods 1, 5, and 9. Part period balancing was able to find this solution. Least unit cost also found a solution with the setup in three period, but a different setup. And silver meal had less holding cost, but then you had four setups, so the total cost was actually higher by this method than the other methods we have, uh, we have found. And then last question here. Assume now that the production capacity in any period is limited to a maximal production amount of 100. What changes does this information induce on the optimal solution? Well, we can try to solve it. And uh, solving this can be done quite easy by exchanging this number by 100, because then this is the optimal production in a period. And in the first example, 439 is the sum of the demand in all the periods. Of course, you should never produce more than this number. Uh, but when the optimal, uh, when the maximum uh, production amount is 100, uh, just exchange this number by 100 and solve the problem. And we can, in the lingo, in the other lingo file, also define this as shown here by instead of using this command, which corresponds to the line I showed in the, in the previous file, we can, could exchange this expression with 100. So let's now try to do this. Just set this mark to say that this is commented out. It should not be valid. And now we rather activate this code to say that the production in any period should be smaller than or equal to 100 multiplied by delta. And you will get the solution as shown here with a total objective value of 816.6. And looking at the x values in the solution, we find that now we have to produce 84 here, we have to produce 80, 87, 88, and 100. And you have also an inventory level as shown here. So now we have the situation where you actually have to store something from one period until a new period where you actually also have production. We remember that the demand in period number 12, uh, no, period number 10, was 112. And since we only have production capacity of 100, we need to store 12 items from period number 9 to period number 10, even if you have a setup and production in period number 10. So this is now the solution which answers the first part of the question here, production capacity of 100. Second part, 
what happens if the maximal production is less than 44? Well, less than 44, we can also, of course, try to solve the same problem. Put in 44 and change to less, not less than or equal. What happens here is that you actually get a solution. And analyzing it, we can see that, well, still we have 44 here. So something weird is happening because the, the constraint was less than 44. But of course, this is, well, this is a fractional number. It might be 43.99999 or something, which is now rounded to only using five digits. It's, it's rounding up to 44. So if this product was a fractional product, which is possible to produce in fraction, this is actually possible, but this, as shown here, is not a valid solution because you have 44 given here. Uh, but if this is an integer product, this is not solvable because we are not able to produce the total of 439 if we only can produce 43 per period. So just putting in less than or equal to 43, we can see that you get an error message here. No feasible solution for it. And I also tried to answer that in the solution file here. This is uh, a way, uh, this is a mathematical description of this constraint, that the r should be equal to 100 and define 100 here as the maximum and put in this code or you should rather write 100 directly like I, uh, <coughs> I did in my code. We find this solution here and uh, here the problem text does not state what kind of product this is and if the product is possible fractional unit it will be solvable by producing 43.9 every week otherwise it is not feasible because the total demand in 10 weeks is 43, uh, 439. So that was the solution for the assignment number three and uh, as mentioned next week is the last lecture I will uh, go through the exam from last year and if you have any special requests or thing I should repeat you can just contact me and then I might also find time for repeating some other topics from, from the curriculum.